Today I'm going to teach you guys how to make a simple budget. So you're going to start by going to Google and then finding the icon sheets. Click on it. From there you're going to create a new blank spreadsheet. Name it whatever you'd like. Here I'm going to be naming it budgeting. Then we're just going to close out of everything. You're going to have a couple different categories. I like to extend my cells just so that I can see more of what I'm actually typing. Um, so it's not like cut off. So I just start by extending a couple of those cells. From here, I'm just going to type into the cells, the top of the cells, so I can name the different columns we're going to be having. First one's type. Then we're going to do fixed versus variable. Then we're going to do the item. And then the actual total expense. There's obviously many ways to go about this. This is just the way that I'm showing it. So the first column is type. When I'm talking about the type, we're just kind of referring to what type of expense is it? Is it a marketing expense? Is it a salary? Is it an operating expense? Is it food? Is it tuition, utilities? Like what kind of expense is it? Then we have the fixed versus variable. I think it's important to write that in there so that you know if this is a cost that you're going to be incurring every month or is this something that's going to be shifting from month to month or maybe you won't have it every month. Then I have the item so I can specify what exactly am I actually spending this money on or what kind of money is coming in or where is it coming in from. The last column is a total expense. So this column is just signifying how much is either coming in or how much is going out. So we're just going to use that to signify that portion. This next portion is just more of a preference of my own. So I highlight all of the cells using that top left corner and I just center them all. And then I also like to highlight the top row, which is just the name of each column. And I like to highlight a specific color to differentiate it from the rest of the stuff that I'm writing. So now we're just going to start by doing an example. So here I'm starting off with business cards and flyers. So I'm going to type that into the item. So this is just a specific thing that I'm spending the money on. Under total expense, I'm going to have a negative number because this is money that I'm spending. And next, I'm going to show you guys how to do conditional formatting. So the conditional formatting is so that I can change the color of the cells or give sheets a specific rule to do. So here I'm doing it to change the cell box depending on whether it's money that I'm spending or money that I'm gaining. So I'm changing it here on the right side. I have the range. So D2 to D34 is just referring to that column D. Then I'm changing the format cells to if less than zero, then it's going to be red. If greater than zero, it's going to be green. And now that's going to apply to that entire column D. And you're going to see how it changes colors depending on whether it's something I'm spending or something I'm intaking. Just remember, you do have to do that negative sign. So now we're just going to continue filling in the rest of the columns. So this is actually a variable expense because you may not be spending the same amount on business cards every month. You might not even be spending any money on business cards. And this would be a marketing type of cost. Another example would be social media content or content creation. So how much you're spending on something like social media or your content creation. So that's a variable expense, it's a marketing expense, and that's obviously something you're spending money on. This is also going to be a variable cost because you might not be spending the same amount of money on your social media slash content creation every month. It's also a marketing expense. So that's just another variable, marketing, and a negative input. Now we're going to do something that might be more of a positive input. So for example, tuition. So it's the child care fees depending on, I think, different counties in Riverside. Not counties, different like cities in the county of Riverside. You might have a different cost that you're going to be charging for your tuition and child care fees. So for example, let's just say that the total cost of how much you're intaking a month is 10000 just for these purposes. 
So that's going to be a positive input to your budget. So you're not going to use a negative sign. You're going to type it in. And as you see here, it's going to change the cell green. I wrote this in as slight variability because depending on the month, there may be less children some month. There may be more children some month. I'm not sure how you guys are planning on doing your tuition setup. There may be some weeks where some kids come in, other weeks where kids don't come in. So I think there might be slight variability there. So I just thought that that might be better as a slightly variability instead of either a variable or a fixed um, input. Another example I have in here is salary. So dependent on how big your childcare program is, you might need someone to provide aid or help. So that might be something more of a fixed variable because you're gonna have this person probably for more time or you're gonna have them assign specific days or give them specific hours. So that's gonna be a negative input to your budget. Next up, we're gonna do an example of a operating expense. So the operating expense is just something that you need in order to actually operate your business. For example, you may have to pay your rent slash mortgage and that's gonna obviously be a negative input to your budget and that's going to be a fixed um, input because you're probably gonna be paying the same month, the same cost every month. So that's something that's not gonna be shifting from month to month. So that's gonna be a fixed operating expense. Let's do another example of an operating expense that may also be fixed. Usually operating expenses are gonna be fixed. So for example, insurance, that's also gonna be a negative input. It's also gonna be a fixed um, input and it's gonna be an operating expense. So this is just a couple of examples we have here. Now I'm just gonna show you how you can sum this all up using sheets. So if you click on the cell below it all and type in equals, you have to type in the equal sign and then start writing sum, S-U-M. You can see here that they already have a like example or they have kind of something you can do yourself. So it says sum and it says D, like D2 through D7. So those are those couple cells right above it. Click enter and then it'll give you either a positive or negative, it's just, whether you went over budget or under budget. So if it's green, that means you're under, like you didn't spend more than you made. And then if it's red, that means that you are spending more than you're actually inputting. So now we're just gonna take a look at a budget that I have made previously. So again, I have the four columns here, type, fixed versus variable, item, and total expense. You'll see here that there's red and green due to the conditional formatting. And at the bottom, you have the total added up. So again, these are just a couple of examples that I'm walking you through. There's different types. There's marketing, operating expense. I have licensing, food, supplies, utilities, grant, subsidy. Then we have our fixed versus variable column. You see you have some variables, some fixed, some that only occur once, some that occur once a year, and then you have some slight variability because it might always be around that number, but it might not. So it might fluctuate a little bit above or a little bit below, but not too much to call it variable. And then you have the column item, which is just more specific as to what kind of input or output you're actually getting. Then you have your final column column total expenses which is just is it a positive a negative and then at the bottom you have your total and it's a positive number here so that's good so this is just an example it's probably not going to look just like this and this is the, not the only way you can go about it but this is just one way to look at it